Let's work on finishing up our large horse on bow rockers, and we're going to start with the rockers coming up next. Welcome back to the shop. My name is Brett and I'm glad you have tuned in. This is part three on our series on our large horse on bow rockers. We're getting down to the crunch time here and we want to get this horse finished up. So this week we're going to go ahead, we're going to get the rockers finished up, which means we're going to go ahead and pull the lathe out, get the turnings, the two turnings for the ends, get those turned and we'll get our slats put down, give it a final sand and then we can get it into the paint booth and start staining it. Also, I really appreciate everyone in the comment section that commented about the ears and had some input on the ears. The consensus is we are going to run those down. We're going to take those down about a half an inch, and I think that's going to make a big difference. And then we can go in and we can continue fine tuning around here. But I really do appreciate all of the input regarding the ears. So yeah, we're going to go ahead, we're going to work on those, but then we're going to go ahead and go through the horse. We're going to finish it. Also, we're going to go ahead and pop this top off. If you remember, the client would like to put something inside. So we did receive the information. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to take a chisel and I've never done this before. So we're going to get to see how this works. It should work but we can take a chisel and we should be able to go in at a couple of points and we're gonna see if we can pop that top off, put the information in and then we can go ahead and seal it down and clamp it down tight and you know seal that up. So that is what we're gonna work on and then hopefully by the end of the week, we can get this into the paint booth, we can start painting it and then also uh, we'll start laying out and start hopefully building the crate because we'd like to see this ship here in the next week or so. So we've got lots to do, so let's get started. So I think one of the first things I'd like to do is before we take the horse off its rockers, I'd like to get a good measurement so that I can start building the crate early on. So that way we can kind of start thinking about how to build this crate because this is gonna be a fairly big crate. Again, I've never done a large on bow rockers, so this is a learning experience. So I always, when I ship my horses on bow rockers, I ship them like this. So the back end is, is up in the crate, and that means that tucks this head and the ears down and protects that part of the horse. So that's what I like to do, and that's the way I ship it. So that means, and plus it shortens up the crate a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and prop this horse up. Just find a scrap piece of wood. We can kind of get an idea. That looks pretty good. So seven foot is going to be a bit, a bit long. I think we can bring it back. I think we can get right around 80 inches on this horse. And then the height of it, I think we can just go an even four foot or about 46 inches from the floor to the tip of the ear 
48 inches, so we can roughly go around there. So we'll start writing those measurements down. And of course the width we know. So that gives me a rough idea of how big this crate's going to be. So like I said, I can go ahead and start laying that out possibly next week. And yeah, we can start thinking about that. So let's go ahead, we can lift the horse off, put our bow rockers up on top, and then we'll pull the lathe out. Good. So I've gone ahead, I've glued up some cherry here, just some scraps, again, things laying over here in my uh, lumber rack. Glued up some cherry, I just need to run this down, run it through the planer, and we'll cut our block, our turning blocks out of this, and then we can go ahead, we'll get our lathe pulled out, and we can get these turned. So let's go through, and we'll get this run down. I think I want to turn these somewhere around two inches, two and a quarter. So I think if we run it down to around, let's say two and a half, that'll give us plenty of room to work these turnings down and get them down to around, like I said, two, and, two inches, two and a quarter. I think that'll look good. Go ahead and we'll just clean up this edge real quick. Set our fence, set the height. So we've got 23 inches overall. I believe what we need in here is around 10 inches. So I made this, of course, our turning a bit longer because each one of these turnings is gonna be a little bit longer. And that is again, so that I can go ahead and push the ends of these rockers out with the turning and that will close up the gaps on the hooves. And again, if you miss that step, I'd recommend go back and watch some of the previous videos and I kind of explain why I do that, but I like making my turnings a little bit longer than what it calls for. 
So half of 23 is 11 and a half. We'll grab our compass and we'll lay out our ends. Set our diameter. There we go. So now with our diameter marked out, we know how much of the corner we want to take off. So we'll do that over on the table saw. fence around. We can line up our corner and knock these corners off. All right, let's see how well we did. So I've gone ahead and hammered on the, the headstock on our turning blank here. All I have to do is get this put into place and locked down and then we can start turning.
Well, that didn't take long at all. And, you know, on my turnings on my bow rockers, I keep the turning fairly simple. So this is a simple design. I've been using it for years and it looks nice, especially in cherry when you get this all stained. So all that's left to do is we'll go over, cut this in half, and then we can fit these to the ends of our rockers. So back over here to the bench, as you can see, I've gone ahead and I've milled my material for my slats and I have those all cut to size and to the width. I've joined them, it's all ready to go. All we have to do is go over to the router table. I even have that all set up and ready to go. We're gonna put a chamfered edge around the first three. Also, I went ahead and cut and installed my two turnings on the ends here of the bow rocker. So that part is all done as well. Now, for some of you that are new to the channel, and you're thinking, well, I didn't get to see a lot of that, then I'd recommend go back. I'll put a link up here uh, on this video. You can click on that. That'll take you back to a video I produced, I don't know, a year or so ago on building bow rockers. It kind of gets a lot more in depth and you can sort of follow along. But for the sake of time, I just really kind of want to get this part done. This is the last part we have to do, then we can just go a final sand on everything, get it in the paint booth and start getting it stained. So uh, that's the next step in this. We're gonna go ahead over to the router table and we'll get these all, get that chamfered edge routered on and then we can start getting these all screwed down and, and glued down. So like I said, I've already gone ahead and installed our bit to put our chamfered edge down. So it's just a matter of, you know, running these through and putting the edge around these slats. These three are done. So it's just a matter of squaring these up, squaring that first one up, and then it's just nothing more than screwing them down. Put a little bit of glue and then we'll screw them down.
So I just went over to my drill press and I set my countersink bit up over there. So I went ahead and I countersunk the holes for our first three. I also numbered them so that I know, at least, you know, for now, these first three, how I want them to go down. And I think for the sake of time, I'm just gonna kind of roll right through and, you know, fasten these down, get this done, because again, this is the last thing I have to do. So I just wanna knock this out and get it done. So I'm just gonna kind of leave you in the tripod and we may do like a time lapse and I'm just gonna roll right through and let's get this done. Now I've gone ahead and filled all of my holes. So I'm gonna let this set up for a few hours, let that, that glue uh, set real well. And then I can go back in here and sand these buttons flush. I like sanding that all flush. And as always, the uh, screw holes where the turnings go in, I'm gonna leave those off for now because when I sand all of this, it's a lot easier just to run the sander up and down, and then I can put those buttons, put those in place in the paint booth. But that's where I'm gonna take this right now, so I can at least get this out of the way. Let's take this into the paint booth, and like I said, we'll let that glue set up. Well, that is just one more uh, item, a big item off the list now of things to do. So I'll let that sit in the paint booth, let that glue set up for a little while. Then later on today, this afternoon, or kind of before I quit for the day, I wanna give that a good sand and I'd like to get stain put on that. And then possibly we can get in here tomorrow and set the spray gun up and put our first coat of clear on that. So while that's in the paint booth though, let's head over to the horse and I'm gonna grab a chisel. I've got the horse set up in the jaw horse so I wanna see if we can get that top popped off of there. Now, like I said, I only put a couple of drops of glue on there. So theoretically, uh, we should just be able to just take our chisel and a couple of hits, we should be able to pop that top off. So let's see if we can, uh, let's see if we can get that done. All right, let's see if this works.
Something's happening. Oh. Boy, if this works <laughs> this well. Look at that. Perfect. That's the first time I've ever done that. What a nice, clean, couple of little tiny areas, but no big deal. Awesome. Well, we'll go ahead, we'll get her stuff. I'll get that all uh, wrapped up inside a bag. And then, uh, yeah, we can glue this down permanently. Yeah, awesome. So I've gone ahead and I have everything that Pam had sent. Uh, we've got it tucked inside a bag here. So there's pictures and a note that she had sent along about her horse, JC, that she had uh, lost a few years back. And then I also stuck in one of my Shaker Woods little kind of like newspapers. They always hand these out at the gates. So I've got a few of those left over from last year. So throw, we'll throw it in there along with a little note that I had written as well. So we'll go ahead, we'll get this all tucked in here and let's put our glue down and get the top put down. It's funny, now that I have the top off, I was looking to see where my glue, the little you know drops of glue that I'd put uh, before I carved it, and you can just barely make them out. I actually carved most of it away, so there really wasn't much glue holding this top back on, so that's why it, it released as easy as it did. So, great little trick. You know, it worked, thank goodness because I was afraid that, you know, it was going to really kind of grab and I was going to kind of tear into the body. So that worked out really, really well that it just kind of popped right off and released. Okay, here we go. Okay, now I think I'm going to throw this up on the bench. I think it'll be easier to clamp it up there and then we can leave it sit overnight. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I'm going to try it. Just see if we can get a clamp on the top. So my clamp, that's going to work. But it's sliding, of course, because of the neck being curved. So why don't we just put a screw with a little piece of wood to act as a stop right up here. And that's a good spot right there because we still have to cut the slot in for the main. So we'll end up just cutting that hole right out of there. So I think for tonight that'll work. I'm seeing some glue coming out here, so let me bring you over. So I was looking right here, this was actually dry, this seam right there. And as you can see, I'll zoom in here. You can sort of start to see 
the glue slowly oozing out. So we've got a really good tight clamp. We've got a good glue joint all the way around. So I'm just going to wipe off the excess glue and uh, so it's a little bit easier tomorrow when we go to sand. Okay, awesome. That is just one more, you know, check on the old checklist here. So that is done. And boy, I'll tell you, like I said, I'm really, really thrilled that that went as easy as it did. So that is awesome. So clamps are tight. We're good. We're going to let this sit now and dry overnight. Tomorrow, we really, it, it won't be any big deal to get in here and give this another good sand. So I would say maybe two to three hours worth of work yet. I want to add a little bit more detail and I want to cut the slot in for the main and we definitely want to take those ears down yet. So we'll work those down about a half an inch or so, set the eyes and really another good, good sand on this and then it's going to be ready for the paint booth. So yeah, we're really, really close at this point. So speaking of the paint booth, we have our bow rockers in there. It's been a few hours. The glue should be pretty well set enough that we can go in there and start sanding. So that's next. I want to get in there and give that those bow rockers a good sand. And I want to get those stained before I leave tonight. So let's go get after that. New day in the shop, as you can tell. And first thing I'm going to do here, let's get these uh, clamps taken off. I want to set this horse down off the bench. We're going to set this aside for now. Uh, I kind of got pulled away last night. I really wanted to get into the paint booth and finish sanding our bow rockers and get those stained. But I, I just ran out of time last night. So I want to bring those rockers back out. Let's put them up on the bench, finish sanding, and then we can go in and get those stained first thing this morning. Then we can start focusing on our horse and finish sanding it, add a few more carving details, and we'll get this finished up. Okay, we are in the paint booth. We're ready to start putting some stain down on this rocker. I went ahead and sanded the ends here of the rockers and also put uh, plugs in the end too. So that's all done. So we'll give this a good, uh, we'll blow it all off with, the, uh, with my hose and let's put some stain on it. Well, now that the bow rockers are all stained and they're in the paint booth uh, drying, we can revisit those tomorrow. Let's focus our attention on the rest of the day on getting this horse 
pretty well finished up, which means uh, we're going to first take the ears down by a half an inch. I think everybody that commented, I think, has said they, they think they're a little bit too tall. And I agree. I think they could come down just a little bit. So I think a half an inch ought to do the trick. And then uh, I want to add a few more details as far as carving. We're going to add a little bit more muscle tone and we'll get the eye set, all of that. But pretty much let's just go through it for the rest of the day. Let's just get this horse finished up. Well, there we go. We have this pretty well sanded. I've spent uh, probably another full entire day on sanding this uh, horse, you know, even more. Saddle block is cut in. I have not yet cut the slot in for the main. I'm kind of thinking now that I, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the paint booth. I want to get the first coat of primer on because then there's a whole bunch of sanding yet after you primer it. And then I'll go ahead and notch for the stirrup staples on either side. And then I can go back in and cut that slot in and cut the hole for the, for the tail too. Those are little things they just take, you know, a few minutes to do. So it's not that big a deal, but I'm really anxious just to kind of get it into the paint booth and get that first coat of primer on. But my goodness, I'm, over the top with this. The ears, I worked on the ears some more. In some of the pictures, when I was going back and looking at them, I when I carved them, I kind of had them kind of like an oval, especially down here at the bottom. So I went in and I did more of like a V, like a natural horse. And that kind of elongated those a little bit more. We did take a, I did take a, a half an inch off the top, kind of reshaped them, so shortened them, but then kind of dropped with doing that and elongating those, it kind of dropped the ears, I think, a little bit. And I think I really like the look of it um, even more. And then as far as the sides here, I kind of went in and shaped. It's kind of hard to see on the camera, but I did go in and add a little bit of definition here, um, kind of like wrinkles and up along the back too. So I, to me, I think they make a lot more sense and I, I do like what, you know, how, how this has turned out. So I think it's just, if you don't mind me saying, I, I think it's just beautiful. And I'm really, really excited over this one. 
yeah, I mean, it's been a lot of work, but it's definitely worth it in the end. So rockers are done as well. Got in here this morning, first thing. Three coats of clear, so I sprayed all afternoon on that, and the rockers are clear, so I'm going to go ahead and bring those out, and then we can go ahead and take our horse and get it set up inside and see if we can put some primer on it. There they are. Boy, these turned out just beautiful as well. I'm just really, really happy with the way everything is, is coming together. Those look really, really good. You just can't beat Pennsylvania cherry. Okay, now for the big guy. Well, our horse has made it into the paint booth and I'm ready to start putting the primer on this and we'll go through the primering process. But I think that's going to be for the next episode. I think that's where I'm going to leave things for this week. Uh, next episode, when you uh, we get back in here, this horse should already be primered. I don't know if I'll record a whole lot of that because it's you know pretty boring. And uh, so I think I'm going to have the primary done and I'd like to have the base coat put on this horse. And then when you tune in the next episode, we should be just ready to just jump right in and start airbrushing and bring in this horse named JC to life. And you're not going to want to miss that one. So um, just really, really happy with the way this is turning out. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the ears now that I, you know, dropped those by half an inch and kind of reshaped them a little bit and played with them. Let me know your comments and your thoughts on how that looks. Keep in mind too that, you know, the mane is going to go in and once the bridle is in place, I think a lot of this is really going to start to make sense. But overall, I also want it to look right before we even get to that point. And I'm you know, in here, and I know it's hard to look on video, but in here, I really, really like the way they look. But hey, I really appreciate you all following along and watching me put this large horse together on bow rockers. This has been a lot of fun, and I definitely want to make another one of these really, really soon. I just love the whole look of it. As always, check out uh, my Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram. You can also follow me on Facebook and Pinterest and, you know, all kinds of things. TikTok, I kind of play around a little bit with that. Also, don't forget to check out uh, links down below in the description if you want to jump in and kind of start learning how to do uh, and get involved in this little hobby of rocking horses. There's always links down there to the Rocking Horse Shop. Check out my friends on Facebook on the Rocking Horse Makers and also uh, Rocking Horse International, great group of people too. I also wanna send a shout out to my friend, Joe Heidi down in Alabama. He's been kind of following me for, I think since I started this channel and he and I become pretty good friends you know, over the internet. And he's also started his own uh, channel as well. So you might wanna check out Joe Heidi. It's Woodworker's Dilemma on YouTube. Check out and see what he's doing. He's doing some really cool projects on there. Well, as always, until next week, Take care, happy carving, we'll see you then.